Hey guys, Tim McCamus back in the shop again. We're continuing on with our composite video series. This evening we're going to talk about incidents at the track, repairs that need to be made quickly or maybe with a little bit more time. But uh, I want to go through the scenario so that you understand uh, what to do. And this, uh, this will incorporate using one of our carbon fiber repair kits. Uh, we've talked about these in some of the other videos, but it does have all the components in it to facilitate this repair. In, in with that, if you want to look at that online, you can kind of see some of these components that I'm going to talk about. So let's say um, we're at the track. You got your ProMod car out or your Top Sportsman car, whatever you have to be running. You're, you're ready for a qualifying run. So let's say you're into Q3 on Saturday and you're, you're ready to make another pass. You've got your car set up. You're on the starting line. You manage to let go of the trans brake button. The car's off on its own. So you're in your fully automatic Pro Mod car, eating your Cheetos, drinking your Pepsi. The car's doing its thing. Auto shifting, auto retard, auto boost control, all that stuff's going on. You're waving to the crowd, and all of a sudden, bam, parts go flying, and you don't know what's happening. So you get to the end of the track and you see that you drifted off the center of the lane a little bit and you hit one of the foam blocks, right? Dead center in the front end of the car. So what you end up with is this, a split in the grill. So you've hit that foam block dead center and you've busted this thing in half. Now what? You gather up all the pieces. Sometimes it's not split clean like this. Sometimes there's a bunch of pieces. So one of the things important to do is gather up all those parts because uh, a lot of times, you know, the track guys are in a hurry to get the thing cleaned up and get the next car down the track so there's not too much of a delay. But there might be pieces missing, like there might be a, a large section of this piece missing here. It's very important that your crew guys understand this. So you're down at the end of the track. Those guys are coming down to get you on the golf cart. They're going to pass up all the debris. They need to gather up all of that debris and bring it back to the trailer with you because you got two choices at that point. You can bitch about it, be a pussy, pack your shit up and go home, or you can fix it at the track. Let's get this thing fixed and get back for the next round. So if you're in, if you're in qualifying, you've got a little bit more time because your next round may be an hour, might be two hours away, might even be the next day. So if you've got some time, invest that in fixing this properly. If you're in eliminations, let's say you just won the semifinals and you're going in the final, you may only have 45 minutes if you're a sportsman racing, you might only have 10 minutes. I mean, they're, they're just gonna turn you back around. So you're gonna get this repaired quickly. So gathering up all those pieces is critical to this because missing pieces are gonna cost you more time to put this back together. So as you can see, um, now I have done some prep work on this beforehand, so you guys don't have to watch me sand on this, but um, this is gonna be frayed and split and cracked and, and jacked up when you get back. It's going to go right back together, but you do need to do a little prep on it. So um, I've already done that. So you can kind of see here. Um, one of the first things we want to do before we put it back together is assess that we have all the pieces and we want to sand this surface where we're going to repair this. We want to abrade this. So the kit that we have actually has some sandpaper in it. You can hand sand it. If you've got some pneumatic tools, if you've got a little two inch disc sander, or you've got some kind of an automatic sander, a, a dual action sander, disc sander, anything that you can lightly sand this um, with some 80 grit or some 60 grit, something that's not too rough where you're gonna remove a bunch of material. You just wanna get this surface nice and rough so that we got something to bond back to. And this edge that's broken now, it's gonna be frayed up and there's gonna be lots of pieces and chunks here. It's not gonna go back together very good. So you want to sand that edge but without removing a bunch of material. You just want to clean it up. So you can see that I've, I've cleaned up all the frays and stuff. And there's going to be some voids here, but I'm going to show you how to deal with that. So once I've got that all cleaned up, I can piece this back together and it will mostly go back together and not look too bad. One thing that we're going to do, and this is an example here, some of the stuff that's still left on here. See, this is kind of rolled up here. I'm just going to roll that back down, but this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be chewed up and a lot of extra frayed material. So we want to put this back together and this exterior portion of this, we want to tape this together with whatever you've got. We've got uh, some masking tape in the kit. 
You can use duct tape. Masking tape works a little better because it's a little finer glue on the back so it'll seal up a little better. We've got this thing uh, reassembled. You can see from the back side here that I've got a really good fit back on here so it almost looks perfect. You can see a little bit of the tape showing through here where some of the uh, pieces were missing. But uh, this will be the front side. I'll give you a quick shot of that. I just stripped some tape across here, made sure it was pressed down nice and tight wherever the damage was. And this is what I'm looking at on the back side. So you can see that I've already uh, sanded this down both sides and I've got a really good fit right here. The, the next step would be to start adding some material back in here to put this back together. So the kit that we have, it comes with uh, fiberglass mat, fiberglass cloth, carbon fiber uh, cloth, and some peel ply material. So um, we've got uh, resin in there and hardener. So uh, you can, uh, the, there's an instruction uh, set that comes with this kit that, that tells you how to mix the resin properly. So you're gonna mix um, resin with a catalyst, meaning you're gonna have to put a catalyst in there for the resin to set up. And you need to mix it properly. If you put too much catalyst in it, it will react too fast and you're going, it's gonna set up on you part way through the process. So you want it to be mixed like the instructions so that you have time to work with it but it doesn't cure too fast, but it also doesn't cure too slow. So you've got to have this thing fully cured. Now, I'm going to, at the end of this, I'll show you how to expedite some of the cure on that. But um, let's say we've read the instructions. It would be good to familiarize yourself with those instructions before you need it. So if you're in a panic here, like you're going into the final round and you need to fix this, you really not have time to stop and read these uh, directions on how to mix this resin. So open that kit up and familiarize yourself with what's in there first. So we're going to cut some material. So I've, I've pre-cut some of this material. Now you get a lot of it in the kit, but I've pre-cut all this in advance. So I've got some strips of fiberglass mat, some fiberglass cloth, some carbon fiber cloth, and some peel ply. What I would do first is I would mix up um, my resin mixture, and then I want to, there's, um, there's brushes in the kit to apply this with. So I want to apply some resin. I want to wet this surface out and we're gonna start here in the center with a narrower strip. We're gonna build our way out. So we're gonna wet this down. So the first thing I would do, this, uh, this fiberglass mat wets out real good. Now, this is a carbon part. There isn't any fiberglass in it, but for doing a repair, this is an easy, quick bulker that you can use to, to repair this and get some strength out of it. So wet this down with resin and then lay this strip, a fiberglass mat right down the center of that damage okay so this is about an inch and a half wide strip here and it's going to wet out real easy as soon as you put the uh, material down it'll start wetting out there's a uh, binder agent in here that's holding all these strands together that's going to start separating if you start brushing this around too much this stuff's going to go everywhere so you want to kind of dab it with your brush let the resin that's on the part soak up into this material and it will flow right into here and i would cut this piece long enough to go from top to bottom on this damage then I would come back with a little wider piece, about twice as wide as this, so maybe a three or four inch piece, and do the same thing, just like this. Now, if you're doing a fiberglass front end, you can use this material only, because this is what that's gonna be made of. Um, if you're doing a carbon part, depending on the damage, you can use this fiberglass down first, so we got the two strips on there, then you can lay some carbon material over that, which now this piece is about five inches wide, and wet that out and lay that piece on there. And you can see it's just dry now, but it'll lay down in there really nice. And now you've got an inch and a half and a three inch of fiberglass, and uh, then the carbon fiber cloth, and then you can put a secondary piece of cloth on top of that to give you some strength because there's gonna be about three layers of carbon on this piece here. And then in the end, um, this peel ply material, and this is, this is made just like it sounds, it's made to peel off after it dries. But what it's gonna do is we're gonna apply that on here and you're gonna see the resin soak into it too. Now you don't wanna add any additional resin at this time. Grab another brush out of the kit and use a dry brush to brush this out. This has a release agent on the material. So this is gonna to form to this, and it, what it will do is it'll help compact these fibers down. Now this part is vacuum bagged, but uh, we're not gonna have access to that now. We're going to be able to do this repair without that. 
So this peel ply is going to smooth out that fiber and flatten out all the material and the resin. It's going to give you a much nicer finish on that part when you're done. That's what kind of finish we have here. So this peel ply material needs to be a lot larger than the repair area and don't want to add any resin to it. Just dry brush it out and you'll see resin will start to soak through it and you want to flatten out any wrinkles. This stuff will lay real easily and it also forms very easily so it's stretchable. It'll move and it'll lay in all these areas. No wrinkles uh, will give you a nice finish when you're pulling it off. So if you see any wrinkles, just kind of push them out with your hands. And like I said, I'm wearing these latex gloves. They come in that kit also. Wear gloves while you're doing this. Wear the respirator that comes with dry respirators, uh, the dust mask in the kit. So when you're grinding this stuff, wear the dust mask. Wear the gloves when you're handling this so you don't get any of the resin on your hands. But work all the wrinkles out of this and then let that cure. Now, if you're in a big hurry, um, normally when you're running your car, it's going to be warm outside, it's usually in the summer and stuff, and it's hot enough. If you, if you want to escalate the, the cure on this, get it out in the sun. So get it out from under the awning and get it out where it's got some direct sunlight on it. If you happen to have an electric heat gun in your trailer, just a handheld electric heat gun, that will also escalate the cure. That's going to move the cure along. So we're going to get some heat in this to start stimulating that catalyst to get the resin set up. So adding some heat to it, just kind of sitting there and working it back and forth and getting some temperature into that part will start to, that process, that exotherm process will start faster. So um, depending on what kind of time you have, the slower it cures, the stronger it is. You really don't want to rush it if you don't have to. If you've got time to leave it set, do that. But you may be doing this repair in the evening. Let's say it's in the fall and, and it's cooler at night. It might be getting down in the 50s. Maybe it's cooler out when you're doing this you're going to have to put a little heat on this to get it to cure because it's going to be so slow in curing you might come out the next morning and it's still not fully cured yet so use some heat to get that um, that process started no matter what you do get it somewhere where it's warm even if you have to put it back in the trailer overnight don't let it set out let it have as much temperature as it can so that it can cure, can, uh, cure properly so now that we've laid all that material down um, I've got a sample part over here that's got some peel ply on it so this is what it'll look like when it's done and you can see that there's there's no wrinkles in this now we have vacuum bagged this but it's going to look similar to this it's going to be smooth and this material then just like i said is going to peel off so you can see it's got a little bit of bite to it but it's got a release agent on it and this will peel off of here And when it does, you're left with a nice finish like that. And then this here, you can just take a peel the rest of this off. See, it comes off pretty easy, but it does have a little bit of bite to it. So you can peel that off and you should have a nice smooth repair with kind of a matte finish like this. So uh, that's a good repair. At this point, uh, you're ready to run the car again. I would suggest using some duct tape on the outside because you haven't done a repair to the other side of this. So you've only done a repair to the back side. So to properly repair this, we need to um, we need to do it from both sides. So when you get back from the race and you're going to get the body work done and get all that done, you can do the, the same repair we did here to the other side of it so that you've got a, a sandwich repair on both sides of that part. This is okay like it is, but if you don't repair the other side, at least with a, with a minor strip down the center, you're going to see a crack show back up because your, your body shop's just going to put filler over that and uh, the temperature from being out, the vibration from the car ring, all that's gonna, gonna show a stress crack in that area. So you've got to do a repair, even if it's just as minor as this first strip. So um, even if you just put an inch and a half piece over that crack and seal that off, if it, if it needs more structure to it, grind it and bee it out just a little bit, put a three quarter strip down there, then an inch and a half strip, then a three inch strip over it, let the body shop feather edge that out, and then you're good to paint it, prime it, paint it, clear it, buff it. That can be done later, but at the track, uh, putting some duct tape on the outside of it after you've done the repair on the inside is totally fine. And it will add some more structure because you're going to have a lot of wind force on the front of this when you're going down the track. So you don't want it caving back in on you with a faulty repair. So definitely stiffen that back up and make sure it's cured. If it's not cured 100%, as soon as you run that car, you get to eighth mile, that thing's going to push in and it's going to destroy the front end again. 
So make sure it's cured properly by whatever means necessary, heat gun, the sun, whatever you can do to get that thing. It should be not sticky at all when, it, when it's cured. It will not be sticky. It'll be just dry and smooth and it won't have any bite to it. You'll be able to tell if it's cured properly. That's the way to repair the stuff at the track. This works on any part of the car. All of it's the same. Check out the kits we've got, but again, familiarize yourself with the kit, read the instructions before you need it. So know what's in the kit, know how to, uh, to operate all the pieces in it before it comes down to crunch time when you need to do it. So thanks for watching. Give us a call if we can help.